This is a proximity switch. A proximity switch provides a signal to whatever it's connected to when a piece of ferrous metal comes close to the tip of this proximity switch. Proximity switches are generally used in industrial machinery and manufacturing processes. Some kind of industrial motion can be limited in movement using this proximity switch. The proximity switch comes in several flavors, one of which is how far the ferrous metal has to get to the end of the proximity switch. The proximity switch will not engage when the ferrous metal is on the sides. The other flavors that these proximity switches come in are normally closed, normally open, NPN, and PNP. Another feature of the proximity switch is the amount of voltage that can be used as the input for the switch itself to power the switch. This particular switch can be powered from between 6 volts and 36 volts. So you can use the standard 24 volts that's used in typical industrial machinery. The proximity switch has a threaded feature along the cylindrical portion of the switch. Used with the nuts that come with the proximity switch, it allows you to position this switch axially in the hole that is drilled for it on the part that mounts this switch. So this would be positioned on the part of machinery and can be adjusted with these nuts. The part of the machinery would be in the middle of these two washers and then tightened with these two nuts. There are a couple ways you can mount this proximity switch. You could mount it on the machinery that moves. Let's pretend this is a piece of machinery that is the moving part of the machinery and it could go back and forth and this would be its limit. So as the machine moves towards that piece, it will stop when it gets within, for this particular proximity switch, four millimeters. Or you could mount it on part of the machinery that is static or doesn't move and the part that moves would have some kind of ferrous metal connected to it and move back and forth and when it gets within four millimeters of the switch it stops. Alternatives to proximity switches are mechanical type switches like these. This is a snap action on off limit switch that can be wired as normally closed or normally open. The proximity switch can only be wired in the way it was designed. This one in particular is normally open and NPN. The same with this limit switch, mechanical limit switch, where it has a rotary type of mechanism, can also be wired normally closed or normally open. The main differences with mechanical type switches and the proximity switch is that the proximity switch is solid state and have no moving parts, meaning that the signal that's gonna be produced by this proximity switch will be a clean signal, whereas a mechanical switch like this can have a little bit of a bounce when it provides the signal to the controller or whatever you're hooking this up to. I talk a lot about the bouncing of mechanical buttons and switches on my microcontroller videos and you can take a look at that video to understand more about what happens with the signal from a mechanical type of switch or button. The proximity switch has three wires because the proximity switch requires power to operate. You're not going to see the typical wire colors. The wire colors are going to be brown, blue, and black. The brown wire is the positive wire. The blue wire is the negative wire. So those two are powering the proximity switch. The black wire serves as the output signal. Let's see how this proximity switch works. I've connected it to a 24 volt power supply. I have my mains voltage coming in to power the power supply. This is the live, neutral, and ground. And for the switch, I have the blue connected to the V minus and the brown connected to the V plus. I'm plugging in the power supply. You'll notice the power supply LED is lit, showing that it's on. Now that we have the proximity switch powered, we can test it by moving a piece of ferrous material close to it. And you'll see that when it gets within that four millimeters, the red LED turns on. You can test this with various metals and you'll notice that it doesn't turn on if you put the metal to its side or even touching it. It has to be in the front. And just to see, I brought in scrap and it doesn't, it does. If, it, if the scrap is heavy enough, it will set it off, which may be a consideration if you're machining metals. This one is pretty dense here. So you can see parts of it will cause it to engage. I wanna try some iron dust. 
This is a bunch of different materials that I have on my lathe inside the tray. But there's a lot of iron dust in here. And it will. Let's see if I sparse it out a little bit. Okay, so it does pick it up. So that is a consideration that you may need to watch out for to make sure that chips and material being machined doesn't interfere with the proximity switch. Let's take a look at the voltages when the switch is engaged and not engaged. First, let's test the voltages that's powering the proximity switch. The blue is the ground or the V minus and the brown is the V plus. And you can see that we have exactly 24 volts powering the proximity switch. Now let's take a look at the output. Let me take this black wire away from this body. Let's take a look at the output signal from the proximity switch from the black wire. This would generally be wired so that the switch connects to the controller via a common V minus rather than the V plus. So when it is not engaged, it's a bad connection. So when the switch is not engaged, it should show 24 volts because it's a normally open switch. Let's engage the switch and close the circuit. We should show zero volts and it's showing 0.726, which is close enough. Now I'm gonna show the what the voltages look like if the common was on the 24 volts positive. So I'm taking the red probe, connecting it to V plus, and it's engaged. I should show 24 volts here, approximately. Yeah, 23 volts. And when I disengage the switch, it should show approximately zero volts. And I got 0 0.001. Let's now connect this proximity switch to a CNC controller and see what you need to do to configure this proximity switch to work with a CNC control software like Mach 3. We'll be testing the proximity switch with the Mach 3 USB controller. You can also use the Pokies 57 CNC controller that works with Mach 3 and Mach 4. Both of these controllers work with this particular proximity switch because the proximity switch is normally open and both of these controllers require a normally open proximity switch or a normally open limit switch. Let's connect the controller to the computer via a USB cable. The Mach 3 USB controller needs to be powered by a 24 volt power supply. The V minus is connected to the DC common or the DCM terminal. The V plus, the red wire, is connected to the 24 V or 24 volts terminal. I'm connecting the proximity switch wires to these terminals rather than the power supply terminals since it's connected to them anyway. So the brown wire is positive, so it goes to the 24V or the positive V terminal. And the blue wire, which is V negative, needs to connect to the DCM terminal or the DC common terminal. This could be wired directly to the power supply, but it doesn't really matter. And finally, for wiring, you need to connect the black wire to one of the inputs. In this particular controller, there's four inputs, in one, in two, in three, and in four. I elected to use in two just to show how it will be configured in Mach 3. When the controller receives power from the computer via the USB, there will be a slow flashing red LED. When I press the reset, the LED stops flashing, meaning the Mach 3 controller has successfully connected to Mach 3. Now we want to go to config, ports and pins, and input signals. What we'll do is I'm going to disable all of these and only enable one of them so I can demonstrate showing me working on pin number two on the X++. It'll be easy to, to look on the diagnostic screen. Let's press reset again and go to diagnostics. And you can see that when I put the metal close to the proximity switch, we got a reset. M1 plus plus limit was engaged. Let's press the reset again and let's do that again. So I'm going closer with the metal towards the proximity switch and watch the M1 plus plus limit. It lit up and you can see that as I move it back and forth, the M1++ limit is going on and off as well. So that's how to connect the proximity switch to a CNC controller. Links for all of these items, including the proximity switch, will be in the description. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching.